Hello again, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing, and today we're going to be asking you a question. Are you doing cover-ups right? Or at least approaching them correctly. All right. Okay, well that's over with. <clears throat> Tried doing some videos earlier, and uh, my mic was all wrong, so hopefully it's right this time. <laughs> but anyways, approaching cover-ups, we have a video uh, already talking about the types of cover-ups or ways that you can approach it uh, design-wise, but as a tattooer, when you're approaching a cover-up, there's a few things that you need to think about before you even agree to take the project, right? And this is going to be based on the skill level and comfortability that you have uh, with various complex designs. To preface this, <clears throat> about 85% of my work is cover-up work, which is wild. There's not a lot of us out there who, I guess, specialize in doing cover-ups. Um, but there are loads of us out there who attempt it. And before you get into it, you need to ask yourself a few questions, right? So scenario here, customer comes in with a tattoo and it's a very fixed image, right? So we've got whatever that they have in this space. And rather than doing a blast over, a redirect, you know, working in anything like that, they're wanting to cover it with a new design that has very fixed margins. Like we'll say on this, we're gonna add like plus 10% to the actual edges and they want to get rid of this tattoo. The reasoning behind it could be anything, right? There was trauma attached to the actual uh, procedure when it was being done that, you know, they just had people tell them that it was stupid. There's gonna be some type of emotional thing there. When they're doing this cover up that they need it to be gone with no trace that's left of it but they're not willing to sacrifice large swaths of the area or even just doing a blast over, just try to make it look as, you know, whatever is possible. So they're left with maybe a fixed budget, fixed size, fixed dimensions, something else that's gonna be going on or even just limited space because there may be other things around it and something that they wanna cover. And so you as the tattooer are approaching it going, okay, how do we do this? And there's two very important questions that you have to ask or at least, you know, have in your, your repertoire before you even get into doing the design, right? And the first one is always asking like, how old is the tattoo? And this is <clears throat> very important, right? So when we first do a tattoo and we implant the pigment into the skin, it takes months for the body to fully remodel that tissue that's been damaged. Especially when there's a lot of trauma. Let's say that this is just a big swath of solid color, right? So it's, it's going to take a while for the body to accommodate the pigment that's been inserted into it and to reheal all of the tissues around it to make sure that the body can keep the pigment there and it goes back to having like a normal consistency in topography. So when that's happening, if we have something that's fully saturated and it's relatively young, when we go to put new pigment on top of it because the skin structure isn't fully remodeled at that time, we have a greater propensity of that pigment blowing out, leaking out, and migrating outside of its space because <clears throat> it's just not fully fixed. Um, you can use this to your advantage in some cases, but for the most part, if we're trying to do something and it's, <clears throat> it looks like it's just going to be very, very fresh, this can even just be putting white on top of stuff, right? It's going to adjust and, and modify the design in the skin because it hasn't fully healed yet. So we need to know that, right? At the same time, when the pigment is really young, it hasn't experienced a lot of environmental stresses yet. So there's less... <laughs> sunlight breaks down and you know, modifies the pigment structure, especially when we have color. And the sun damage as well over time, when we go through that length of time, it, it changes the thickness of the skin. As we age, our, our skin thins out. And when it thins out and the environment's been affecting it, a lot of that pigment that may have been there is going to be resorbed into the body, trapped in lymph nodes, stuff like that. And so there's going to be less quantity of it in there. Even if it's just less quantity of pigment producing particles, right? Like you have a loss of chromophores with like orange, which happens, right? It's just they break down with UV interaction. <clears throat> there still is pigment in there, but it's not gonna interrupt or try to distract and take away from the uh, light stuff that we have that's trying to interact with our new pigment that we're putting on top of it. So it's very important to know that age of the tattoo because it'll dictate how you approach things moving forward, right? Um, I'm working with a person right now who has a full rib panel of like line work of a design that they just didn't really want, but they kind of felt pressured to get into. And we're trying to do a cover-up. Now this has been like, it's only like a month old. And 
I said we can attempt to do a few things. We can try to blast over top of it with white, break this stuff up, loosen up the pigment that's in the skin, <clears throat> and disperse it a bit more so it may make it easier to cover up. But I don't have any guarantees because this is so fresh. I'm pretty sure it's not going to do much. So we did. We went in, we blasted over the whole thing with a white pigment. It settled into a medium gray, which looked really, really good. And it healed out. It was just still solid black, right? But now the pigment actually has leached out. We knew that this was going to happen, right? I comped the time because we're doing it as a test. And now we're going to try to figure out a way, since we've uh, gotten rid of that potential avenue, to try and redo the tattoo at that time. Now I wouldn't tell everyone to do this as a tester, because every time you go into the skin, you're increasing the chances of scarring, you know, other effects that may happen. And so trying to get things done as quickly and efficiently as possible and decrease the time and share is great for any client, especially if they have trauma attached to the tattoo, right? If they've paid X amount of dollars and you're having to pay five to 10 times as much to cover it, it can be a lot for that person to carry. So first question is always, how old is the tattoo? And that language is good. You have to use that when you're explaining it to people, right? Like because it's so young or because it's so old, this is what I expect to happen. And more often than not, that'll be what happens, right? So that open lines of communication are really important when we're doing our cover-ups or approaching them anyways, right? Um, the second thing we need to check, and this is a mental note, right? Is the complexity of the design. Um, and this is really important when we start thinking about the requests of the client, right? When the complexity of the design is less than what is already in the skin, it makes it much more difficult to cover up, right? As let's say that they have a solid black bit of tribal or something that they just don't like and they want to cover it with fine line flowers. It can be done. It's just going to be exceptionally difficult to do and that'll turn it into a money pit, right? So the complexity is, <clears throat> is something that you have to look at. If it's something that's like styles, right? If we have like styles, uh, this is a positive because sometimes we can do, you know, just hiding it inside the design naturally or just building off of what's there. Like if you have, you know, a, a fruit blossom or something, which little joke here, if you want to draw fruit, fruit blossoms, you can just do a five point star, fill it in with <clears throat> little hearts around the outside. Pretty simple. I and mean, this is quick with a marker bent over friggin' fr freezer, right? Uh, and how you change that perspective can change how the actual uh, fruit blossom lays. Anyways, <clears throat> I've had a few times where we had people come in and they've had four point flowers like dogwoods that they wanted cherry blossoms. So we were able to just literally same style, add an additional petal just by modifying some of the existing structure that's inside and made it extremely simple and efficient to do, right? Very, very easy. So that's like complexities, right? I've had somebody come in with a traditional style just as it was a mess. Uh, it was like a sunflower and geometric stuff and it was butchered to hell and they wanted to put a fine line design over top of it of a skull and some mushrooms, right? And it was exceptionally difficult to approach because the designs were not congruent. So as I'm using a single line weight, we have these combating line weights that are throughout it that are like four to five times as thick and trying to hide them inside the design was very, very, very tricky. It took a couple of sets to get through it, but we did and it turned out very well. <clears throat> but if it hadn't been that same amount of contrast and the line weights, I probably could have just gotten it done in one set, right? So the complexity of the design is going to dictate the amount of time that it takes to get into it, which is cool, right? So th those are the two things that I would recommend anytime you're going to be getting into cover-ups that you ask. And this should dictate exactly how much effort that you have to describe to the client when you're getting into it, right? If we have a very fresh tattoo that doesn't match the complexity, maybe they're trying to scale down the complexity of something that's already there, the amount of work that's going to go into it increases exponentially, right? If we have a two hour tattoo, it's going to be four, four, maybe eight, maybe 16, maybe 24. Like everything is just going to start going up and up and up and up, right? <clears throat> so we want to make sure that they are aware of that and that you as the tattooer are aware of it as well, because when you start approaching that stuff and you have a fixed budget, you have to mentally prepare for how much time that's actually going to take. Somebody comes in and says, I want to cover it with this. And you know, I have very tight margins. It's fresh. Complexity is different. I have a budget of $200. You have to be like, I, I don't think I can do it for that. You know, it's probably going to be close to five, six, eight, 10, 12, whatever it is. Right. And be open with them and be able to explain why that's one of the biggest things that we have to think about when we're doing 
cover-ups are approaching them is that you're having to rebuild trust with the not only just the industry with that person right but with the whole process so being available for questions understanding what you're telling them and keeping an open book so you can work back and forth explaining your limitations or your apprehensions so that they're not coming into it and going i 100 percent trust this person and maybe you fuck up <laughs> And then they will never get a tattoo again. And then they have to look at this thing that just doesn't carry one event that was negative for them, but two or three or four or five. I've worked with people who've tried to get a cover up on a single tattoo from six different artists and they have dumped thousands of dollars into this. And then they've gotten laser treatment, which I don't support. Um, and then they've come to me to fix it, you know, and we're still thousands of dollars away from what we need to do to get the tattoo to where it is. And the only way that we were able to make that happen is just through communication. So, um, are you approaching cover-ups correctly? If you're not doing this, you probably are doing it wrong. So make sure that you understand this basic stuff. And if you're just getting into cover-up tattoos, we're going to make a couple other videos today that are going to come out over the next couple weeks that should help you know how to approach this specifically. So this is our intro one at just approaching it. And I'm going to go make another one now. That's that. Like this video, subscribe, you can fucking ring the bell. I don't know. Buy a hat. I don't care. This is free, right? That's all that matters. <laughs> if you do want to support the show, you can become a, be a member for a buck a month. You can just go into YouTube, say I'm a member. It's a buck a month. I don't do anything, but say thank you at the end of this without saying your name. Maybe I'll do a name drop one. I don't know. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'm going to make another one now.